G'day, and welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me, and today I'm talking dingoes. Dingoes are Australia's native wild dog. Now the term native brings in a little debate because they were actually brought to Australia by indigenous Australians over 5,000 years ago. Now for recent arrivals with Europeans like the feral fox and the feral cat, the feral fox and cat have had a devastating impact to the environment. But the dingo didn't see any extinctions happen. It slotted in to an ecological role and as a result, we need the dingo in Australia to maintain balance in our ecological systems. The dingoes are quite different to domestic dogs. Now, a couple of their physical features, they can range in colour from uh, a light sandy colour to red that we typically associate with them, uh, through to black, which happens in some of the northern Australian dogs, like up around the Kimberley area. Now, dingoes hunt prey. Their eyes are right on the front of their head. Their ears face forward. The cuffs down on their feet can rotate nearly 180 degrees, and that's just for agility when hunting. And domestic dogs have lost a lot of those traits. Now also, to deal with the wild environment, dingoes only breed once a year. A domestic dog can breed right throughout the year. It doesn't have a specific season. But for dingoes, they breed in autumn. The pups are born early winter. Now why do you think that is? I'll give you an example. If you go to the Great Plains of Africa, the worst time of year for wildebeest is when there's drought and there's no rain and the wildebeest are really struggling. But that's the best time for lions because wildebeest are easier to hunt. Now in Australia with dingoes, whether it's wombats, kangaroos, emus, it's similar. There's less food in winter. And that means the prey is more vulnerable, which means it's good time to hunt for dingoes. So they have their puppies in winter and then the puppies also emerge in spring when there's lots of uh, young animals around that have emerged with spring that are prey to the pups. The dingoes typically use burrows as shelter. Um, they might use a burrow that goes back into a rock cave around a big set of hollow logs. Maybe it's an old wombat burrow, but typically they sleep underground and they certainly den their pups underground when mum has given birth. Let's talk about dingo puppies. Now they are different from domestic dogs too. Now they're born the same. Their little eyes are closed. They make little vocalizations to call out to mum, but they suckle and drink milk. Now the difference between domestic dogs and dingoes is dingoes grow up so much faster. And in the wild you need to because you're vulnerable while you're a puppy. So as they grow, they develop much quicker. Their eyes open earlier. They start eating solids sooner. They're very uh, agile and playful. And they learn a lot of those social interactions and skills for when they are going to become a part of the pack. Now, as puppies, they're mostly cared for by mum. But dad also has a role. Now, the dingoes will be in a pack. You might have the alpha male, and he might even have uh, two or three females. Um, but at one point, if a female's got pups, the alpha male protects the pack and the female protects the pups. Now, as they start to grow, they, they mix and they play with mum and dad, even though mum and dad don't always think it's play. But those puppies the whole time are learning. How naughty can they be? What will their parents let them get away with? But that's building social skills for when they too become a part of the pack. A dingoes live in every Australian environment, except Tasmania. They never got to Tasmania. But every environment from tropical rainforests to alpine snow slopes to the red centre and deserts of Australia, they are incredibly versatile. Dingoes live in a pack. They protect each other, but they work together to hunt, something that most Australian animals don't do. By working together to hunt, they can take down animals much larger than themselves. Red kangaroos, emus, grey kangaroos, and Whilst they're doing that, they're actually playing an environmental role. Now by predating on kangaroos and emus, they control numbers of the herbivores and that lessens the pressure on environment. If you remove the dingoes, your herbivore numbers increase because there's nothing preying on them. When they increase, they damage the environment. They eat too much of the environment and that's not good for everyone else like small mammals and birds and reptiles and amphibians. You need dingoes as a top order predator or apex species to maintain balance. The dingoes are mammals. They need to drink. Most mammals normally do. But dingoes in the central Australian areas can get so much of their moisture by licking plants that might have a bit of dew and moisture on them in the early morning. 
or late at night. Now they also get fluid or moisture from their food. But typically, you will find dingoes where there is a semi-permanent water source. They do need to drink. Dingoes face a range of threats, but none more severe than humans. And dingoes don't get along with agriculture. They predate calves and lambs, and it's a problem. But at the moment, we're really not finding the balance, which is the dingoes need to be some places, and some places mightn't be suitable for them. Australia is at war with the dingo, and its numbers are radically declining. Now remember what I've been over, with dingoes in the environment, they predate herbivores, and that means less pressure on the environment. We need dingoes, we just have to find balance. A couple of bits of homework. I've told you what time of year dingoes normally breed, but I want you to tell me how many puppies they normally have. It's a little bit different than a domestic dog. Now the other bit of homework, which is a little bit harder, is I want you to tell me where dingoes come from. What's their lineage? Are they wolf? Are they dog? What are they? It's up to you. That's all for today. See you later. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Now, if you like what you've seen or wanna show me your homework, just put it into the comments. This is what I do, connecting people with nature and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.